The government has launched its consultation in relation to conversion therapy and it appears it's going to honour the two commitments that were made in the Prime Minister's letter to the Evangelical Alliance. And those are to ban or to end coercive and abusive practices, but also to safeguard spiritual support. The good news is that the government has recognised the importance of human rights, of religious freedom and of personal choice. It does not intend to impact everyday Christian practice. But it's not said specifically how it's going to do that. So it sounds good, but the detail is lacking. The consultation says, for example, that any ban will not include private prayer. But that's generally understood to mean individual prayer, so that's offering no real protection in that moment. We continue to have significant concerns because some campaigners are very clear in their desire to see everyday Christian practices, such as prayer and pastoral care, being banned. And they're going to be responding to the consultation, asking for it to go much further than it currently does. What we do know is that the consultation confirms that conversion therapy involving physical violence is already illegal, and we support moves in the document and for tougher sentencing around that. But it's the proposals in relation to talking conversion therapy that are much less clear. Talking conversion therapy is a new term that's not defined well in the consultation. And that's really important because this is going to be made a criminal offence and in the worst case would actually be punishable by up to five years imprisonment. There are two aspects related to that. The first is to do with consent and that needs to be voluntary, informed and the person has to have capacity. Um, but we need to understand those terms because informed consent is often used in something like a medical procedure where you sign uh, documents. Here the government said an under 18 can't give that nor can a vulnerable person and we need to understand the definitions around that. The second aspect is coercion, and that's borrowed from domestic violence legislation. And there the issue is repeated uh, behaviour, repeated patterns of behaviour. But here they've said actually a one-off incident could lead to coercion. And so that's a redefinition of the law that we would need to understand a lot more. And then they're really confusing because it's not clear whether you need both those factors or one on its own uh, could trip you over the threshold. So the summary is, look, there are some positives in here in the language being used by the government, but there are still significant concerns. It's lacking in details and clarity. And so we'll be setting out our own response to that and encouraging our members to respond as well. We want to ensure an end to abusive and coercive practices, but we also want to make sure that people are free to choose the help and support that they want, including prayer and pastoral care. Thanks.